Welcome to the Great Loop Radio podcast, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. I'm Kim Russo, the director of AGLCA. Today, we are going to talk about fitness aboard, and this is such a great topic. I get lots of questions about this. I struggle with this myself, Um, so I'm really excited to have Kevin Williams with us. He is a member who specializes in this area, and we're going to jump into that topic in just a minute, but as always, I do want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes & Associates, Great Loop Yacht Sales, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners and viewers to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And with that out of the way, Kevin Williams, thanks for joining me today. Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here to talk about this topic today. Yeah, as I said, this is kind of a a big topic um, because people who are concerned about fitness always have questions about how they're going to maintain that health aboard. Um, So let's start, you know, tell us about you. I mentioned that you're an AGLCA member. Tell us about your boating experience and your looping plans and then how that, you know, came to you finding your passion for fitness. Absolutely. So as we get into that, let's remind people that since we're going to be talking about fitness and things that are physical in nature, people that engage in this should have some level of doctor's clearance to do so. So if you're starting a new routine or you're maybe pivoting into something different or shifting into a different approach, let's make sure you've got a good doctor's clearance to do that. Excellent. So having said that and gotten that out out of the way. um, So upon retirement last year, my, uh, my wife Edie and I had some decisions on how did we want to, you know, spend the next several years. And for some reason, we kind of got onto the RV thing and um, actually started looking at RVs and, and uh, talked about what that would be like. And one day she looked at me and she says, why are we looking at RVs? We're actually boat people. And, you know, upon (laughs) reflection was like, yeah, we've had more boats than RVs by far. And she was spot on. So we had learned about the loop some time ago from some very close boating friends, Jim and Jackie Pacone, who were gold loopers, I think in 2019. And they have been uh, great friends and boat mentors of ours. And so we were aware of it already. And we, um, we thought about that and thought, that's awesome. We kind of jumped in with both feet and we acquired a main ship 400 in uh, September of last year. And um, we had some intentions of beginning the loop this year but decided to take um, a year and kind of cruise the region around the west coast of Florida and um, uh, learn the boat better, learn the nuances of the vessel. And um, I think we're going to be much better prepared to make an official launch onto the loop in the the spring of, of, of this year. Excellent. And I I love when people are, you know, taking that time to get used to the boat first, because I think it just makes the whole process a little bit easier for them and, you know, kind of adjusting to life on the loop. So um, love to hear that. Tell us how, um, you know, you found this passion to help people with fitness and kind of are are specific to a board, you know, how does that fit with your boating plans? Yeah. So, you know, as we transition to full-time live aboards, um, you know, I had, I had to make that transition myself and I felt that anxiety and like, so how am I going to maintain this routine? How am I going to maintain these certain, you know, regimes or how does that work when I try and throw in the learning curve of everything that's going on and there's other maintenance things going on. Um, and so I had to kind of step back and kind of sort that out for myself, but I was passionate about it because I knew that it was something that's critically important as Um, as I continue to age and as I continue to experience some of those things, uh, you know, I want my, my, the last decade of my life, um, whenever that happens to be as productive and active and, uh, and um, beneficial as it can be. And the only way that I can do that is to maintain some level of, of rigor around physical fitness. So I had to figure that out on my own. And, And in doing so, I would hear others say, yeah, that's kind of a thing, you know, how do you, how do you manage some of this? So I started to kind of break that down and, and learn about it. And, um, and then in the process of doing that, determined that I needed and, and had the benefit of be, becoming a certified physical trainer. And so I learned tons in that. So it's kind of coupling all that together 
combined with my passion of knowing that as we age, um, things are going to naturally deteriorate. And how do you use a strong physical fitness regime, a strong functional fitness program to help uh, maintain our viability into, into the later years of our life, so to speak? Yeah. Well, and it's a great topic um, because loopers obviously are typically an older demographic. All, you know, although it's right. shifting younger, we have more people who are working aboard and, and families aboard, but still the, yep. ba- the majority of loopers are retirees. So yep. it's an older demographic. I know for myself, when I first transitioned to live aboard, um, I had been, you know, a five day a week gym person right up till the day right. <laughs> you know, I moved my stuff on board. Um, and I, had an expectation that I would be able to maintain that level of fitness. I brought some sure. equipment, some things like that. Sure. I've always heard and, and told people it's an active lifestyle and it is. Um, but, you know, immediately that was harder than I thought. And immediately yeah, right, I right. did see a weight gain and, you know, I'm probably, I'm not retired. So a little bit younger, maybe than the average looper, but not by much. And, right. um, but you know, aging, as you said. So, you know, I, I was dealing with that weight gain and going, is it the activity? Is it plain old? <laughs> I'm getting older. Sure. Sure. You're eating out more um, yeah. than, you know, so all of those things kind of combine yeah. when you start yeah. this lifestyle. So it can be a struggle for people. Um, sure. So let's kind of, you know, dig into that. I mentioned that it is an active lifestyle. Uh, you kind of commented uh, kind of in our pre-interview that it is yeah. active, but probably yeah. not enough activity just on its own to maintain a really high level of fitness. So tell us about that. Right. So let's be clear. Any amount, any amount of activity, any amount of physical exertion is better than none. Right. Mm -hmm. And certainly there are aspects of the looper lifestyle that are indeed very active. I think it's probably not uncommon that somebody might go from walking, let's say an average of five or 6,000 steps to a day to that when they're at a port that they're visiting, they could be doing 10 or 11, 12, 13,000 steps. So that's a market increase, right? Um, They are likely doing physical activities regarding maintenance that they wouldn't have done maybe when they were in their dirt home. So there are some things that are increased or change as you go from a normal dirt boat, dirt based home kind of approach into a live aboard lifestyle for sure. But you know, it's kind of like the Swiss cheese analogy. We want a nice block of Colby cheese and the, the looper lifestyle gives you a little bit of Swiss cheese and that there's some holes in the program. So if you think about the basic modalities of physical fitness and movement, things like pushing, pulling, um, twisting, cardiovascular things, plyometrics like jumping or reactive things, there are some things that are present in the looper lifestyle, but there are some things that aren't. And the thing that I find Uh, interesting and it was motivating for me is that science tells us the things that impact our um, our physical well-being the most are typically the things that are missing the most in the looper lifestyle and specifically that is uh, cardiovascular capacity and and uh, strength or physical strength um, abilities so those are really, if there's a Swiss cheese analogy, those are two of the larger gaps that are really there in a typical looper lifestyle is cardio and strength, which, as I mentioned, science tells us those are two of the leading indicators of, of our whether we're going to have disease and dysfunction as we age, is if we can have good, good cardio capacity and we can have good strength, we can overcome Um, a lot of those issues. And like I said, those are two of the things that are kind of missing in a typical looper lifestyle. So those are some of the areas that you really need to focus on as you think about a physical fitness program. Yeah. And I I do want to get into, you know, your suggestions to overcome some of the challenges that are inherent in physical fitness aboard a boat, you know, space, the time when yep. you're on the loop, those yep. kinds of things. Um, sure. But I do also yep. want to just kind of jump ahead a little bit before we get to that. And, you know, everybody yep. is coming into the loop at different levels of fitness and, you know, different sure. uh, commitment to fitness, yep. I guess maybe is yep. a good way to yep. put that. Yep. Um, so for those who are listening and going, oh, I don't work out anyway, so this doesn't apply to me. I kind of want right. to jump to that because, um, you know, you have some reasons that the actual looper lifestyle might be easier if you do some of these things to improve 
the general fitness. So um, is there anything specific you recommend to the person who really doesn't have a workout routine at home, um, but would like to make, you know, the everyday moving, the everyday right. pushing, the everyday pulling, the things right. that they're doing right. on board easier. So that might be, you right. know, before we lose those people, <laughs> yeah, right. let's right. go ahead and, and jump in, you know, for those people, what are your suggestions on how they might, you know, kind of get started in incorporating a level of fitness into their looping. We're not looking yeah. to turn you into marathon runners, but you exactly. know, the day to day does come, become easier if, if you have right. some of that physicality to it. So go right. ahead and tell us about that. Yeah. So I, I think the, there's a risk for the person that maybe led a relatively sedentary lifestyle or really didn't have much physical exercise and they, they begin the loop and they have these thoughts of maybe I should increase my physical fitness. There's a risk that they go, well, it's a steep learning curve. Maybe in some cases it's a year, maybe it takes a couple of years and I'm just going to hit the pause button on this. I'll think about that later on. Right. Um, there's two issues with that. One, it's another version of kicking the can down the road. And, you know, a couple of years from now, there'll probably be another reason why you choose to not pursue it at that point in time. It'll be another reason. But the other thing is there are things that you're asked to do on the boat that you may not have the physical ability to do. And with a, you know, with a program put in place, you can actually overcome some of those things fairly easily. And let me give you an example of that. So like, like, like many loopers, we have a dinghy that has a 9.9 horsepower outboard on, on the back of it. And when we first got that, I had a very difficult time taking the outboard into the up into the tilt or back into the you know kind of in use position, pushing it back and forth like that. I had a very difficult time. Part of it was that particular outboard wasn't designed super well for that. But another piece of it was frankly, I didn't have the strength and or the neural capacity, not meaning me enough. It meant that I didn't have the neural connection to make those muscles work the way they're supposed to. And I recognized that and it was a big issue and it caused me a lot of stress. And so rather than getting frustrated by it, stood back and I, I put on my uh, physical training hat and I said, what do I need to do to be able to do this successfully? And so I began a daily regime of a specific set of exercises. And, you know, within a pretty short period of time, two to three weeks with some consistent effort, I was able to do that. And now it's something that I don't stress about at all. And I do easily, but it was an example of, Hey, I recognize something that I'm deficient in that I'm having a difficult time doing. Let's put a program in place so that I can overcome that. And I think we could all come up with those certain things in and around the boat that we either struggle with and at best we get frustrated or at worst um, we could get hurt doing those things. Right. And so safety should always be a priority. So, um, so I don't want people who have, have, haven't been active in a physical fitness program to not kick the can down the road. And I want them to be involved so that they can increase their safety on board as well. Yeah. Even everyday things, um, you know, carrying the laundry to the laundromat sure, or the, the sure. marina um, laundry room, sure, or, sure. you know, you, even if you have access to a courtesy car, you're probably carrying groceries a little bit further from the marina, yep. marina parking yep. lot to the yep. boat itself. Yep. Um, yep. You know, now if you're locking through right, you're using the cleat and other things on your boat to help you hold the line to the wall, yeah. but it still does take sure. an amount of strength. Sure. So, um, sure. yeah, and that's one of the reasons I think this is such a great topic because for even the people who aren't asking the question about how do I keep my regimen, um, there are some things you can do to make looping yeah. a little bit easier. Um, yeah. So we've kind of approached that from the people who maybe aren't doing a whole lot today. Um for the people who are and have that fear right. of, you know, my fear came true and it's okay because I'm right. having a great right. time. <laughs> sure. Um, sure. But, you know, walking away from the, the heavy activity lifestyle, um, you know, what are some of your suggestions for them um, on how they can continue that level yeah. of activity? Sure. sure. So the good news for this group is you have some background and you have some knowledge and you have uh some momentum and you have a level of commitment. So you have a lot of the, the base requirements in place. Um, I think where people fall down a little bit is if they had a certain regime of, let's say they do a group fitness class five days a week and, um, and they do a little cardio on the side and, and they have a regime that they do and it's like a specific time of day and it's part of the routine and everything's awesome. And they try and transition onto the boat and they, they try and transition with that same template. Right. And they try and, and 
pick up those blocks and put them on the boat and it just doesn't really work very well. You really have to make an adjustment. And one of the ways I found that was easy to kind of move in that direction is to think about what were my goals previously? What was I trying to accomplish? And what was left undone? Or what could be explored a little bit further? So tweak that in a way that moves you in a different uh, direction of motivation. So think about if you're a person who follows some of your biomarkers or you're a person who follows you know, some of these physical fitness measurements kind of things, think about those things. Think about those areas of fitness that you may not have explored, like maybe balance or stability, or rather than just muscle strength, think about muscle endurance. Think about those gaps that you have or the areas that you find interest in and revise your goals. It gives you a kind of a logical step off, step on point so that you can adjust to something different and it gives you a renewed sense of motivation and a renewed sense of direction without trying to kind of move. I did this before and I really liked it and I just want to continue that. It's really hard to make that transition without making some sort of adjustment in the process. Does that make sense? It a hundred percent makes sense. And you have just spoke to exactly what I did wrong because the absolute most ridiculous thing I brought aboard when I moved aboard was my boxing gloves from my boxing uh, class at the gym. Right? I don't have a heavy bag here. It's a boat. Um, you know, I don't know what my envision I was going to find boxing gyms around the loop. Right. No. Right. <laughs> so, yes. you know, first trip back home, those were gone. Um, yeah. But yes, it was exactly what you described that I was like, oh, well, I'll just keep doing my routine whenever I can. And that'll be fine. Yeah. And it, it's just kind of it's a different thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's take a quick break. Um, I'm going to play a message from our sponsors. When we come back, I want to dive in how to overcome some of the inherent challenges, sure. space, okay. time, equipment, those types of things. So we'll be yep. back in a sure. moment. Green Turtle Bay Marina and Resort has consistently been voted a must stop by loopers. It has earned the coveted five anchor designation from Quimby's Cruising Guide. This full service marina features over 450 slips. They are located at mile marker 31.5 on the scenic Cumberland River. Green Turtle Bay is a proud commander sponsor of AGLCA, so join them and find your waterway of life. Our friends at Argo Navigation have created a free boating app that gives AGLCA boaters an easier way to plan their trip, navigate safely, and share information with fellow loopers. Argo has nautical chart coverage throughout North America auto or manual routing, depths and tracks to avoid shallow water, trip details while en route, and a captain's log to save everything. You can also see other boaters, message them, and share experiences with in-app social features. Coming soon is a premium version with weather, wind, tides, offline charts, and more. Download the Argo Boating app on the App Store or Google Play. We're back on Great Loop Radio. My guest today is Kevin Williams. Uh, Kevin is a certified fitness trainer, and he is also a looper, getting ready for his own loop. And he is sharing some tips on how we can maintain or even build our fitness level while aboard. So, Kevin, I want to jump into how you come over overcome those basic obstacles. So let's start with looping is a pretty busy lifestyle. And until you yep. do it, uh, sometimes um, people don't realize how busy you actually can become. So right. what are right. your thoughts on, you know, finding time for this amidst kind of learning yep. a new lifestyle? Absolutely. So time is always in the fitness world. Time is, is usually one of the barriers you run up against. And what's interesting is, you know, the looper lifestyle is a, a super busy one, especially if you're early in the learning curve and you haven't quite got your uh, feet under you completely yet. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think about broader populations, there's a lot of people that are very busy. So it, you don't have to be a looper to have a busy lifestyle. You could be a zookeeper. You can be a mailman. You can be a teacher. Everybody has, has, uh, has time constraints. And so it's really about how do you set it as a priority and, you, and setting a priority, but more importantly than how does it become a habit? So for those who are new, you know, research tells us that it takes about 60 to 70 days of consistent effort before something starts to become a habit. The good news is we're not trying to take the hill on day one. We're not trying to run a marathon necessarily. We're not trying to become Mr. Universe. We're trying to provide a strong foundation of functional fitness. 
And it doesn't take a ton of effort to make that happen, but it does take consistency. And so think about your day, think about the things that you do, either things that um, maybe you can cut back the, the time devoted to it, or even more importantly, how can you do things just a little bit more efficiently so that you can carve out that 30 or 45 minutes, um, four to five days a week to get in a reasonable workout. When you start to incorporate that into the right time of day that fits for you and you do it consistently over several days, it'll become part of the habit. You have habits on the boat today that you do virtually every day and you don't think about it as, uh, as a chore or something that I have to prioritize. It just naturally comes to you. And if you make physical fitness part of that, then sooner or later, about 60 or 70 days later, you're going to feel like it's just part of your day. Come to that part of your day. This is when I do my program and you jump into it and you get it done. Um, but remember that action will always come before motivation, right? So take the action, take that first step on the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. And pretty soon that action will turn into motivation. That motivation will turn into a habit. And then it, the time priority thing will start to subside. Here's another thing that I, I'd like you to think about with time is that most people think about, okay, well, I've got to figure out how do I get 45 days squeezed into some part of my day. It doesn't have to be that way. Science tells us that what I like to refer to as exercise snacks work just as well as that exercise meal. You don't have to put your exercise all into one kind of a 45 minute regime. If you have 10 seconds, you have three minutes, you have five minutes, you can jump in. If, for example, if push-ups are part of your regime and you want to do 30 push-ups a day, jump in and do 30 push-ups and be done with it. If then you want to do a series of sit-ups, jump in and do a series of sit-ups at, at lunchtime. It doesn't have to be in one go. You can spread these um, these uh, exercises and that curriculum throughout the day. It doesn't have to be in one compressed time period. Excellent. And so that probably a bigger consideration even is the space on a, bo a boat. That can certainly be sure. a challenge. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to find a lot of gym equipment coming with you. Right. Um, right. So what are some suggestions on overcoming the, the space obstacle for people living aboard? Yeah. So like I've said, safety should always be our top priority. So like on, on our vessel, I don't exercise on the foredeck, right? Because if I were to fall from that area, I'd likely fall either into a gunnel or I'd fall into a rail. And that's certainly someplace where you don't want to be the show when stuff like that's going on. So think about um, all the pieces of the boat that you could devote towards helping you exercise. So railing is big, stanchions are big stairs and or ladders. And that doesn't mean that you're walking up and down the stairs or climbing up or down the ladder. That means you're using those to brace yourself or to do other things. If you have a space that is roughly um, six to seven feet long and four to feet wide, that is plenty of room to get um, every exercise you'll ever need to do completed. If you don't have that in one kind of one consolidated space, then you'll find yourself moving around the boat um, with a little bit of creativity and, uh, and frankly not using, I don't have space as an excuse and just with a little bit of thought, um, you can definitely work out these issues. I've yet to see a vessel that I looked at that said, you know, that vessel is, there's no way that you're gonna um, not be able to uh, find some place to work out on that, on that vessel. Every vessel has opportunities to get a, a proper, physical fitness workout in for sure. Okay. And then of course the other obstacle is having equipment, um, you know, yep. not only from the space for the equipment, um, but and space to use the equipment, but where do you store yep. things? Um, so right. give us some suggestions on that. Sure. Not everybody brings their treadmill aboard, right? Right. So <laughs> although I have seen so Pelotons are, aboard. <laughs> I've seen Pelotons. Yep. Um, so there are really depending on how you count it, three, four, maybe five basic pieces of equipment that you can do a ton of things with. I like to start with a basic requirement of an exercise mat. Um, this helps protect the deck, right? It helps um, 
provide you some comfort when you're doing those exercises where you're you're on the ground doing those floor based uh, exercises. I recommend with a exercise mat that it be one that is cushioned rather than the real thin ones. I like them to be about a quarter of an inch thick. That does two things. One, it helps protect the deck a little bit, but more importantly, it, it is advantageous for doing tons of balance based exercises because you can introduce a little bit of instability under your feet and you can get a lot of great exercise with that. So there, so there's a map. Um, exercise bands are uh, easy to store, uh, inexpensive. I currently two, use two sets of exercise bands. One is about 12 inches long and the other is four feet long. Um, two different sets, they both roll up in a small bag, they're inexpensive, and you can do a ton of things with those. Uh, make sure you store those out of the sun and you inspect those when you use them so that when or if they start to deteriorate, you don't have the rubber band snap effect from, from using one of those. Um, and then a couple of other important ones is, I actually discovered these fairly recently, but there are adjustable dumbbells that basically it's a, depending on the model, it is a dumbbell that you can adjust from two and a half pounds up to, there's ones that go up to 80 pounds. Um, and these are, so think about a dumbbell that has a clicker on it. And depending on where the clicker at is at and you lift the dumbbell out, it either brings with it one weight or five weights. And these are a small footprint. Um, they are a little heavy, which, you know, depending on how you're managing weight on the boat, it could be a good or a bad thing, but they have a very small footprint and they are really key to getting resistance training into, into your program. Um, and I discovered, you know, that fairly recently in incorporating those into my own program. The last thing I would comment on is, is do think about shoes. Um, some people will, might be prone to exercising barefoot while on the boat. Um, if you're using the weights that I just talked about or you're doing certain exercises, you're going to want some sort of traction. And I also think it adds a, uh, an element of safety and keep you from slipping and moving about. So make sure that you've got a pair of shoes that are appropriate for the kind of exercising that you're doing. And there's a good chance that when you get access to land, you're probably going to want to do some walking or maybe do a, a light jog. So think about uh, shoes that are appropriate for that as well. Yeah, that, that's all excellent advice. Um, what are some, if, if you can think of any, um, resources? So if somebody's, you know, hearing this and saying these are some great ideas, how do yep. I learn how to use those resistance bands if I bring yep. those aboard? What are some resources, yep. you know, um, you know, I used to, uh, and I think the pandemic brought a lot of this, but like small sure. space exercises yeah. and you can yep. Google that and find stuff. Yep. But so what yep. are some resources like that? You know, where should people go next if, if we have effectively inspired them to sure. just keep fit yeah. aboard? Sure. So there's a couple of resources that are, they're widely available. Typically the, the more popular vendors of some of these uh, tools like exercise bands will have really good resources around various exercises that you can do. They'll have a YouTube channel, um, things like that. The other, if you um, just do some query searches around um, body weight exercises is, is, is another good one that doesn't require any equipment. And it's, um, I literally was doing some research this morning that's showing that uh, a good body weight exercise program with that has some amount of rigor can be amazingly effective. Um, Previously, there was an idea that you really had to lift heavy weight to, to get um, that good resistance training. And there's some techniques and some science that's coming about that's showing that you can, just with body weight, you can accomplish an awful lot. So body weight, exercise queries, using the, when you find the equipment that you think that you'd like to have, um, if it's a provider that's of any size, they typically will have really good information on on uh, exercises for that particular piece of equipment as well. Excellent advice, uh, Kevin. I want to thank you. I think hopefully we have um, shown those who are very uh, into physical fitness in their land life sure. that it can be transitioned to boat life, um, but hopefully also inspired some that the boat life becomes easier if you can yeah. maintain or, or achieve a, a little bit of a level of fitness. Yes. So um, yep. as I said, I get a lot of questions about this topic. So thank you for coming on and helping us figure it yeah. all out. That's awesome. Um, I'm grateful to be able to do so and thank you very much.
Yeah, well, and enjoy your own loop. And of course, we'll talk to you throughout that, I hope. Um, and to everyone who's watched and listened today, thank you for joining us for the Great Loop Radio podcast. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, safe cruising. Oh,